The BBC Micro was one of the leading home computers in the UK during the 1980s. Hundreds of games were developed for the system, ranging from simple text-based games to elaborate 3D space simulations. This range makes it a fantastic source of ideas for our own programming projects. So sit back as I take you through my top 5 games to rebuild if you're a beginner programmer. Hi there and welcome to Bytes and Bits. Retro games are a great source of ideas for your own programming projects. So in this video I'm going to have a look at my top 5 BBC Micro games which you can then use to make your own coding projects. They're all great games in their own rights but they're particularly good for you to use as a beginner programming project. So if you've been through my Space Invaders course, and I'll put a link up in the top corner there, then you'll have all the coding skills you need to complete and rebuild these games. If you haven't had a look at that already, then please do check it out, because um, that will really get your coding skills up to scratch. So let's get started then with our very first game. Breakout is a great game to use as a beginner project and this version from Acornsoft shows that it can actually be implemented even using a very basic text mode. I used the bat and bouncing ball part of this program as my program in 25 minutes video and I'll put a link for that up in the corner. So you can see we can very very quickly get the basic mechanics of the game all put together. After that then, all you need to do is to build the wall. And if we look at it closely, we'll actually see that it's it's really the same as we did for our Space Invaders. So again, if you look at my Space Invaders course, you'll see that we created a series of rows and columns of Space Invaders. And the bricks can really be thought of as rows and columns of bricks um, and made even easier by the fact that they're not moving or firing back at you. So this is a great game um, which you can put together quite quickly in sort of like a, a, a one day project. Next up is the classic Space Invaders. Uh, and on screen here we have um, Acornsoft Super Invaders. And this is really the basis for my main beginners programming course. And again, I'll put a link for that up in the top corner there. So really, um, this is one of the courses which um, I really do advise you take if you are just coming into programming, because that will take you through every skill you need to go through and build any of these games we're talking about in this video. So really do have a look at that and see what you do. But again, the, the game itself, a great beginner's course. Um, lots of skills needed to learn here, handling data and arrays and, and various sounds and objects moving around on screen. So do make sure you give that a go and look at Space Invaders. The natural progression then from Space Invaders is to Galaxians. Uh, and on screen we have Acornsoft's again version called Arcadians. And really, if you look at it, it's, it's very much the same as Space Invaders, but this time we have to program our aliens breaking out of the formation and coming down and attacking the player ship. And again, sometimes they'll come singly, sometimes they'll come in a small formation. But apart from that, the, the moving of the player ship and the alien grid across the top, and of course all the missiles and collision detection, it is really just the same as our Space Invaders game. So here's one that if you finish Space Invaders then, you can start work on this to upgrade it. And again, another, another sort of one to two day project to get this one up and going. For my fourth game then, I've chosen Asteroids, and, and this is Acornsoft's Meteors on screen. This is really a different way of looking at the graphics in your, in your program to both the Space Invaders and um, Breakout side of things. Instead of using sprites, little, little sort of graphic elements, we're now using what's known as vector graphics, where we're drawing our ships and our asteroids as, little, as line segments. So each part of them is an individual little line segment. And this adds a number of extra things we have to do inside our program. 
So our ship is no longer constrained to just moving left and right, but it's actually moving full screen. But not moving left, right, up and down. We're actually rotating our ship left and right, and then using a thrust key to actually make it um, move. So we're having to simulate um, that whole process and the velocities and accelerations within our, within our code. As well then, we have a wraparound effect, so if you watch the asteroids as they go off one edge of the screen, they then wrap around to the far edge. And eventually then we get to the stage where there are a number of alien ships coming in and firing at you as well. So quite a lot of extra work to do beyond the Space Invaders course, but all the techniques are covered in, in that in that tutorials. Um, so really just a matter of getting your head around it, looking at how you model the various um, asteroids and spaceship and the motion and the slowing down effects and the bullets and so on. Um, so a nice meaty project, not too difficult to put together, but again a bit more harder than either Space Invaders or the, or the other ones we've looked at so far. My final suggestion for beginner programmers then, and this is going to be a real challenge for you, is based on Starship Command, another game by Acornsoft. And here we have our spaceship, but we're now not constrained just to a single screen. We actually have quite a large area of space in which we have to model all of our aliens and our own spaceship flying around in. So on screen you can see a small portion of it, and then, of course, on our radar screen, you can see that there's a much larger area where these alien ships are actually spawning well off screen and then flying in to attack us. So we not only have to model um, this space and the alien ships and the way in which the alien ships move, we also then have to start building in some artificial intelligence into them so that they can come, attack the ship and then escape. And also then, um, look at how we're going to model this world, which not just the elements being placed in the world, but the world will have to rotate around our spaceship as well. So if you watch that, our, our spaceship stays stationary and in a single direction in the centre of the screen, and the actual world is drawn rotating around it as we both speed up and, and move our ship and rotate it left and right. So quite a lot of coding to get and quite a lot of modelling to get your head around and build your variable structures and objects and so on to be able to model that. So give that a real good go, um, that will really challenge you. Uh, say I'll be doing a project on this, so either, depending on when you watch this video, that will either be coming or I will have finished that. Um, but a real challenge and I do um, feel a really good one for you to get your teeth into it. And if you can manage this one, then you're really well on your way to becoming a really proficient programmer. So there you have my top five tips then for developing your programming skills. And really no matter what programming language you're using, whether it's Python and Pygame, or whether you're following me through with this Tick80 um, development system, you, you'll really have a real challenge and will really help you build your skills and develop and develop your programming practice. And again, programming is one of these things where it really is the more you program, the better you'll get. And that really is the only way to develop your skills. So if you're just new to this, um, do have a look at my Space Invaders course. I'll put the link just up in the corner. Uh, that takes you through building a game right from the very start, so not, not having done any programming at all, right the way through to being able to produce the full Space Invaders course, uh, a game, and that will then give you all the skills you need for any of the challenges in these five games. So do make sure you have a look at that and really have some fun learning to code. See you soon. Bye. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.